What's up everybody, welcome to our channel. On today's video, we're going to talk about the top 10 worst neighborhoods in the city of Jacksonville, Florida. Despite having beautiful natural settings, historic sites, some of the nicest small towns and communities in the state of Florida are within the Jacksonville area. The city is known to have some of the worst inner city neighborhoods in the entire country, and on this video, we're going to look at the top 10 worst neighborhoods within the city. And we are looking at real estate prices, crime rates, murder rates, and other types of statistical analysis to come up with these determinations. In the city of Jacksonville, there's a lot of neighborhoods that have a lot of notoriety. Among them, Eureka Gardens, Cleveland Arms, and 103rd Avenue. But these are not actual neighborhoods. In this list, it's not about which neighborhoods have the most notoriety on the internet or the most rappers claiming to be from there. We're actually looking at census designated places, neighborhoods, zip codes to tell you which actual neighborhoods have the worst crime rate in the city. So if you're from the city of Jacksonville, you probably won't like this list. Since we're using the neighborhood's real government names and many of the most notorious neighborhoods in the city are actually within neighborhoods that have lower crime rates as a whole. For example, the famous Eureka Gardens is actually within the Hillcrest neighborhood. The Hillcrest neighborhood isn't entirely bad. In fact, there are homes on the Cedar River which are actually very expensive. It wouldn't really be proper to consider an apartment complex itself as a neighborhood. Therefore, while you might hear of Eureka Gardens being mentioned as a neighborhood informally within the city of Jacksonville, it's really an apartment complex, and I couldn't really put an apartment complex as a neighborhood because the statistical analysis to determine how bad it is would reflect areas that have million dollar homes. If the title of this video were the top 10 most notorious neighborhoods in Jacksonville, then I could definitely see myself going there. But we're looking at actual crime rates to determine these neighborhoods. So if you're from the city of Jacksonville, a few neighborhoods that you would expect to be here are not actually on here. There could have been about 40 to 45 neighborhoods that could have made this list. Only 10 of them are on here and they're the 10 with the most concentrations of crime. It is a very large city with a lot of bad neighborhoods, so it's impossible for me to include every single bad neighborhood on the list because I can already see somebody saying, you forgot to mention here, there, and there, and there. Again, there's only 10 neighborhoods that can make this list. And before we move on to the list, I want to mention one more comment that I can already see somebody typing, which is usually a blonde realtor lady who wants to say something like, We have bitches. Why don't you show the nice side of town? We have done plenty of videos on the quote unquote nice side of Jacksonville, but you didn't click on that video and thank me for it. You came to this video to complain about why I didn't show the nice side. So you're the one who clicked on this video. You could have clicked on the good one. You clicked on this. Moving on to number one, and normally I do a top 10 backwards, but on this list, I'm actually going to run it in chronicle logic, chronic, chronic, chronicle logical order. Moncrief Park is the most dangerous neighborhood in the city, and it has a lot of crime rates to back it up. It also has a lot of notoriety. Moncrief is one of the most notorious streets in the entire city. It runs the length of the city through the northwest side, and this neighborhood has some of the most grimy inner city neighborhoods within the entire city of Jacksonville. Famous comedian Cat Williams has a few comedy skits about the city of Jacksonville, and you bet he mentioned Moncrief. Now, Moncrief is actually a neighborhood name that several neighborhoods in the city have, so it is a very expensive area. Most people would consider the whole Moncrief area as one neighborhood, but there's actually several neighborhoods within that area. Moving on to number two, the neighborhood of Magnolia Gardens is also nearby and off of the Moncrief area. This particular neighborhood is not as densely populated. It's a little bit more spread out and it has 45th Street running through it, which is one of the most notorious streets in the entire city. That a lot of people that actually live in Jacksonville would just refer to this area as 45th Street 
because they don't actually know the neighborhood boundary. So if you live in the city of Jacksonville, take some time to look at an actual map and look at the actual neighborhood boundaries so you can understand what these are since it seems like a lot of people just label a whole entire area as Moncrief or a whole entire area as 45th Street. But when you look at an actual map of the neighborhoods of the city and the way they're laid out, the way the people in the city interpret it is not really the way it's laid out on a map. Comments are usually preceded by the word, I've lived here for 50 years, as if the fact you've lived there for 50 years means that at any point you've picked up a map to understand the neighborhood boundaries. Moving on to number 3, 29th and Chase. Now this area is also referred to as Moncrief, but again if you look at the neighborhood boundaries, it's an actual neighborhood by this name. Some of the worst pockets of crime are within this neighborhood. According to Area Vibes, it is the number one most dangerous neighborhood in the city with a crime rate of 400% higher than the rest of Jacksonville. This neighborhood boundary is between Moncrief and 95 and it is near the municipal golf course in case you want to record a golf music video which actually exists in Jacksonville. Rappers from Jacksonville actually made a music video on a golf course, maybe it was right here in this municipal golf course, instead of maybe out in the suburbs where you would expect a golf course. By the way, why the crap do they have a golf course in the hood? So while you're in Jacksonville, if you wanna see some of the most hood neighborhoods, the Moncrief area in general is good. Number four is 45th in Moncrief. I guess this neighborhood combines Moncrief and 45th Street. They have a BP gas station here. This is the site of the notorious Hilltop Apartments, one of the most gangsta apartment complexes in the country. There's even a Taco Bell and a Golden Roll Chinese restaurant. A few liquor stores and some auto part companies. What else do you need in the hood? The neighborhood has several large lots that are wooded. They were never developed. So I guess you can enjoy a little bit of the natural fauna if you're able to get out in the nature in this neighborhood. I guess the upside of living in the hood in Jacksonville is how much nature the city has to offer where even if you don't end up within a really good neighborhood, the city itself has so much good stuff within the surrounding area that if you got a car, you can get out there and enjoy the rest of the city. Moving on to number five, the neighborhood of Lackawanna the rapper Julio Fulio prefers this neighborhood. One of the lyrics in his music video says, Cool, like Lackawanna. In this neighborhood, nobody's lacking, not even an iguana. I might have added the part about the iguana myself. But you get the idea. It's a neighborhood that also has notoriety for being very gangsta. So if your realtor in Jacksonville is uh, trying to put you into this neighborhood, I would probably pass. There is a neighborhood restaurant called Iguana in the Park that looks really good right outside of the neighborhood boundary. So I guess if you live in this neighborhood, you still have access to the many amenities of the better parts of Jacksonville. Jacksonville has some of the best food of any city I've ever been to. And I actually love going to the city for that reason. So one great thing about Jacksonville is they can cook for real. Like this city is great when they're cooking. Number six is the Midwest Side neighborhood. This is a large neighborhood, one of the largest neighborhoods in the city with the largest population density and largest footprint. So it's a big neighborhood that has a lot of residential parts, lots of homes that are older. It's kind of an older part of the city. They do have a Popeyes. If you're not really into quality mom and pop foods, you can always go for the generic crap. Now the Springfield neighborhood is just to the east and it does have some of the highest crime rate in the city. However, I decided not to put it on my list because there is a lot of gentrification going on in that neighborhood and it is starting to be close to downtown enough to where eventually it might actually become an attractive neighborhood for a lot of people. So while that neighborhood right next to this neighborhood has a lot of crime, it has some of the highest crime rates in the city but it's being gentrified. And that is why Springfield did not make the list. Moving on to number seven is Newtown. This little neighborhood is right to the west of downtown. And while it is a small neighborhood, it is a very interesting neighborhood. As you're coming off of Beaver, right out of downtown, there's like six little row houses. They're little shotgun houses, really cute 
little houses. When you're coming right off of downtown, the neighborhood is an older neighborhood. It has a lot of older houses, so it has a lot of characteristic, which is another thing about Jacksonville is that there's a lot of like older houses, a lot of older neighborhoods, and these neighborhoods tend to have a lot of character. And in that aspect, Jacksonville is different than any other large city in Florida because it's actually an older city because of the lack of air conditioning. The southern part of the state, for the most part, wasn't developed until like the 1960s. There really wasn't much in South Florida. But Jacksonville's weather is a little bit better, and they're actually able to have really large population here. In fact, Jacksonville historically has been one of the largest cities in the state, not only recently, but like historically. Number eight is Arlington manor so on the south side of the city which is actually the east side of the city geographically but the people of jacksonville for some reason call the east side the south side and the south side the way i don't even know how that works you got to ask the people of jacksonville to clear that up for you but i guess technically it's the east side from a geographical standpoint but the people of jacksonville call this the south side for some reason i don't know how it works i guess it's south of the river but it's really east of the river. I don't care how that works. But anyways, Arlington is a neighborhood that has a lot of malls, has a lot of things going on. Great food in this neighborhood as well. Cotton's Barbecue is in this neighborhood. I love it. Around Justina Road is one of the most notorious parts of the city. So while Arlington, almost like the east side of Arlington kind of turns into the suburbs heading towards the beaches. But once you're closer to downtown, it has a few really bad neighborhoods. And this is definitely one of them. Okay, let's cross the river back to the east side of Jacksonville. This neighborhood is right to the east of downtown, and it is one of those neighborhoods that has the highest crime rate in the entire city. There's a lot of really nice older homes in this neighborhood, so the neighborhood has a lot of potential. I love the older palm trees that are nice and big. This neighborhood has a lot of characteristic, and I'm surprised this neighborhood hasn't been gentrified yet. The city of Jacksonville has a lot of potential, and it is one of the fastest growing cities in the country. A lot of people are moving to Jacksonville for affordability and weather. They're disregarding the high crime rate, I guess. But this neighborhood has a lot of potential. Even though it's one of the worst neighborhoods in the city, I believe this neighborhood in the future could have been gentrified and, and just changed for the better. But for now, it is definitely going to be on our list of the worst neighborhoods in the city. It has a lot of crime, and even though it's got a great location, so far nobody's really invested into it. Okay, number 10 is Panama Park. Now this neighborhood doesn't have the highest crime rates in the city. This is my own personal selection that I wanted to throw into this video. Historically, this is a white predominant neighborhood. The vast majority of the neighborhoods on this list are African American. This neighborhood has a lot of poverty, homelessness, addiction, and as you walk around the neighborhood or drive around, hopefully you're driving, not walking, you'll notice that there's a lot of homeless people, a lot of people just hanging out. Sometimes they're not even wearing a lot of clothes. It's just grimy inner city poverty in this neighborhood, and I wanted to put this neighborhood in here to show you guys that not every bad place is black. So many of these online lists, they'll show you neighborhoods that are black, and, and every there's a lot of bad white neighborhoods in Jacksonville, and this is an inner city neighborhood that has a lot of problems, but there's also a lot of rural neighborhoods in Jacksonville that are pretty bad. A lot of these large cities have really bad neighborhoods that are white, but they're not within the city core. They're on the outskirts of the city, and I have seen in the outskirts of Jacksonville some of the grimiest neighborhoods, mobile home parks out in the middle of nowhere that are predominantly white areas. So a lot of times people have the notion that all of the bad neighborhoods have to be black or that all the bad neighborhoods are black. The reality is that there's a lot of poor white poverty in the Jacksonville area. It's just spread out into the suburbs, and actually some of the cities like McClenny and Glen St. Mary's that are kind of out in the outskirts of the city, these little towns are predominantly white, and they have a lot of drug addiction problems as well, but those populations are more spread out through rural areas where you just don't see it as much, and I think a lot of times what happens in inner cities is that minorities end up in inner cities, and uh, they're not safe uh, out in the countryside, so they end up gathering in neighborhoods where it's more obvious, it's more of a conjunction of people, so it stands out more. 
Um, but when I look at the Jacksonville area, there's a lot of really poor white areas as well. So don't take it as every bad neighborhood in the Jacksonville area or every poor person is black in the Jacksonville area. If you start to explore within the outskirts of the city and the surrounding countryside, there's a lot of really bad rural poverty around Jacksonville. And just to give you an example, we just did the top 10 neighborhoods in Fort Myers. And I went ahead at Fort Myers and I didn't include just the city limits. I included kind of like the whole metropolitan area. And like the top three worst areas are North Fort Myers, Pomona Park, and Scum Coast, aka Sun Coast. And these are all white areas, trailer parks, but they're not within Fort Myers city limits. They're kind of on the outskirts. So if we had done kind of like Jacksonville metropolitan area, I could have included a lot of areas that are poor and white. And I just want to clarify that because there's always somebody that goes on these videos and says something like all the bad areas are black. And yes, within city limits, but when you look at the whole metropolitan area, there's always a lot of grimy stuff on the outskirts. And Jacksonville is a very large city, very spread out. And when you get to those small little towns on the outskirts of Jacksonville, there's a lot of poverty and crime and drug addiction and a bunch of grimy crap far out into the woods. If you liked the video, let me hear your thoughts and opinions. If you're from Jacksonville, I know you're upset at several things I said during the video, so go ahead and hit the comments and let me know what you think. Before I end the video, I want to do one last thing. I want to recommend three small businesses, mom and pop places that are within the Jacksonville area. Number one is Papa Sean's Pizza. This is in Baldwin, which is a small town right outside of Jacksonville. No association, disclaimer, I don't have anything to do with these businesses. If you visit Jacksonville, I just want you to go to these businesses because they have really good food. Jacksonville has some of the best food in the country, and I want you to try these local places. Papa Sean's is a pizza place. Now, this guy actually had a barbecue place in Baldwin, which is some of the best barbecue ever. So, you're dealing with a real chef here, a guy that's got talent when he's cooking, and I definitely recommend that you check out his pizza place, some of the best pizza we've had in Florida. The second business that I want to recommend to you is Cotton's Barbecue, which is in the Arlington neighborhood. Some of the best barbecue you're going to find in the United States is in Jacksonville, and there's probably too many good barbecue places to mention. I personally like Cotton's Barbecue a lot, and I recommend it. Part of our videos is not just to talk down the city and make it look bad. We have shown a lot of videos showing the good side of Jacksonville along the beaches, and I also try to recommend their businesses. So our videos do have a goal to help the people of Jacksonville and promote small businesses. And the last business that I want to recommend is 90 Miles Cuban Restaurant. This is another great business in Jacksonville. Now, Jacksonville is not known for Cuban food like other Florida cities, but this little restaurant is really one of the best you're going to find in that region of the state. So there you are, three businesses that I recommend. And again, these are not commercials. This is my personal opinion, my own personal review. I'm just letting you guys know there's good food in Jacksonville. So if you're just passing through Jacksonville, these are three places you might want to check out to give you a little taste of the city. I hope you guys liked the video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. We're out.